Hello, how's it going? So at the end of October, I started rearranging this part of the museum to make space for stuff in, to basically get the plan sorted for wiring uh, all of the stuff up to the internet <laughs> and the phone lines and stuff. So people can call in, call up synthesizers, call up all the phones, hopefully interact with a few different things, for instance, potentially electromechanical battleships or a drawing machine, things like that. Lots of things, but yeah, it's just, um, I haven't, I need to get, get it going. So the, when I did the rearranging of this bit a few months ago, there was one thing that I didn't dare tackle, and that was this rack right here, which was originally over there and has been there since uh, I got it in about six months ago or so and started fixing it and all of the wires were going and it was all just a bit of a hodgepodge and it was never really right and it's always been a plan to kind of get it in a row. So um, I'm just gonna show you what the plan is uh, with all of it, wiring everything up. I wish we had a wider wider lens here. And yeah, what the plan is moving forwards. So this is the demonstration unit. There's a bunch of random rubbish in front of it because of the rearranged this morning. But um, yeah, this has largely stayed the same. Uh, it's a wooden rack, actually. Uh, this is what Richard put together the rack. Hopefully gonna try and track down another empty uh, iron rack possibly, hopefully, so it can have a bit more height so we can fit some more things in, including maybe a spare ringer because we're gonna leave the ringing machine down there, the other ringer. I, I managed to get hold of another ringer, which is the same type, but slightly older. And um, that's right there, bit of, a, bit of a beast. Still works, tested it, they sound pretty similar. But um, yeah, was gonna hopefully make a side-by-side -side comparison or something like that. But yeah, that's that part. And then just below that, it's got a bunch of um, line relays and stuff for the demonstration phone stuff. It's, this is basically the same. Still wired into the two Tecmones uh, nine, announcer 9A, which is sat behind it. So people have been able to call in and basically see that and stuff. So these have a different telephone number. There's a bit of a plan with this when we get it wired up to the internet. Right now it's got a phone number of like five, seven, eight, number number there's another final selector here waiting to you know uh, increase it but what we need to do is in order to deal with a, a bit more traffic is we need to reduce this number size so it ends up going uh, this will be the uh, group selector that's directly connected as it is to these but then these two will act as the second digit so if one of them's busy it'll be able to go over to there and then two final selectors as well so that means that this this will be able to deal with two phone calls any one time to any of the synthesizers or the musical instruments or or whatever or the phones in the museum so whether it's somebody trying to call in f in the museum or from externally there can be two people so it's less likely that it's engaged on this side anyway and that's largely the same on this side. Uh, so this is where most of the phone, the phones are gonna be connected to is through this setup. So there's uh, eight line finders. Uh, pro, I think only four are wired in and working right now. And then you can, and then that takes, you can get five different phone calls going through here, uh, pretty much four phone calls pretty much. And then that goes into these, and then that goes into the final selector. So there's a lot of um, traffic that can be put, uh, put through it well, you know, relatively, if people call in. So what is the plan for people to be able to call in? Well, this is what's happening. So we're getting a VoIP line, and then that's connecting to some commute computer malarkey, which I haven't got a fudging clue. So Chris, a friend Chris, uh, we've had a go trying to figure it out. It's a little bit complicated that side, so there's an awesome guy by the name of Will who's looking into it as well. And um, yeah, basically it's taking, um, taking the VoIP line from there and then that directs it over to four phone lines that go into this, this setup. And um, this empty box down here, so this one right here, is where the, uh, the, the electronics that is gonna convert the uh, stuff from the dual tone uh, that is coming from the phone, like the PBX, the, the computer that is talking to the phone line and directing the four different phones into here. It will go into a, some circuitry here, which will basically convert all of that into uh, basically a pulse pulse style. And what that means is um, it's gonna there's gonna be a time limit to the phone call. So let's say somebody makes a phone call, they get directed to one of the four different phone lines, and then they will be able to be directed to the machines. And what happens then is. Uh, you have the ability to make a phone call to one of the one of the phones in here or the simps or something and you can stay on there as long as you want and then one of the buttons on your like mobile or whatever you're calling in from will be a hang up 
So it doesn't actually hang up your phone from us, it hangs up that phone line from here. So it means that you'll be hanging up and then you can make another dial and um, you could do this all the way up to the time limit which will be like what, like five minutes probably or something. And that means that, yeah, four people will be able to call in at any one time, be able to maintain their point in the queue on the phone uh, and still be able to hang up from different synthesizers and things and phone numbers and whatever's going on whilst on the phone, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So there's four circuits in here that are gonna be converting the dual tone uh, stuff over to pulse dial and letting you be able to hang up and stuff whilst you're still on the phone line. And then these are gonna be, in order to completely avoid any pointless and other aspects, that's gonna go directly up to these. These group selectors right here, there's another one. So these final selectors, they're gonna be uh, turned into drawing machines, funnily enough, but it's gonna be, um, four group selectors, these are different group selectors to these, and these are gonna be directly wired in to the circuits. So that means these are gonna be coming from the internet. Those are the internet, and then, it's, and then you dial in, and you choose whether you wanna go to this machine or this machine, depending which number you're trying to call. Or later on, who knows what the future holds, maybe more machines, we'll see. So that's, that's one aspect of it. There's a few diverter calls that I've wired in. Don't know, I just, um, yeah. <laughs> Fair shout out to Chris for these ones, they're really, they're really cool. These are actually um, 1504s and they slightly vary. They're slightly simplified versions of the 1505, it seems, which is quite interesting. But we'll be looking at these soon because finally got the, uh, the case uh, bolted in. It was a little bit complicated because the case that I ended up with has, is slightly wider than the other ones, like um, if you look there, and it wasn't actually designed for this size. Uh, even though we thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. So now it's bolted in in a different means. So now that's going to be hooked up, going to be fuses on the back, hooking up that. We'll have a look around the back of that in a second. So um, the other f great thing about them all being here is they can all be um, blocked off with a single, uh, single acrylic screen, which I've already got. So the acrylic screen goes over that whole thing. There's an acrylic screen that goes there. That's all gonna be some other stuff. I think um, the synth synthesizers are going there and they're gonna wire up to here as well. This is great because now there is actually working space uh, be behind it all. And let's have a look around the back. Oh, you go around here. This won't be open to the public. This is just for fixing stuff. And then boom, you, you, you're able to work. There's quite a bit of space um, and it goes along here. There, there's gonna be another power supply there as well. But this is the back of the MDF. This is uh, something that we managed to recover, which is really cool. And um, the plan with this is it's gonna be used completely incorrectly, basically. Uh, all the phones and the synths and stuff from the museum are gonna go down into these uh, junctions, basically. And then off these, there's gonna be wires that go over and down into the inputs of uh, where, wherever they're going, which is usually right here. This is the back of the UAX-13's rack uh, A, and this is where most of it's gonna be wired in. There's quite a bit of a, a mush here. Uh, this, has, this stuff hasn't been wired in yet because um, what this wire is doing is it's coming from this, which is the incoming and outgoing uh, phones of the UAX-13. That There's a big, thick, chunky wire, chunky mother of a wire, that goes into this rusty old thing. Remember, this was sat in a garden for a while, so it took a while to get going. Oh my God, what was on top of that? Whoopsie daisy. Um, well, that that big chunky wire actually connects around the back. Oh, you can hardly see it. So, there, so, so the final selectors are gonna be directly connected to the phones. So um, now the phone numbers are down here via this massive chunky, I think it's, uh, I can't remember how many pairs it is. I think it's 50 pairs, oh, I don't, I don't remember. But that goes down into here, and as you can tell, I, I still haven't connected them all quite yet. I've only connected about 20 of them. But that'll be a project as it goes. So this, these wires, there's gonna be wires that also go over along here, and then up ooh, into these. And this is where you're gonna choose the phone number for whatever's going in. So for instance, these wires, right, these, these wires, these wires right here, uh, just some things that I put in, they come from the phones around the museum. There's a, um, up there, if you see, there's a, there's, a, there's a cable tray that goes up to that cable tray. That cable tray goes along and out into the rest of the building, and that's where all the phone lines come from. This uh, UAX-13 rack, uh, C rack, usually would come with a ringing machine on here, but sadly this has all been 
disconnected when, when I got hold of this, when we recovered this, and all of this is just a bit higgledy-piggledy. It's just, yeah, I, mean, I don't even know whether that matches. I think that is the right one, but it's not right. And then these fuse boxes. So likely we're not even gonna bother using any of this because trying to hunt down the, uh, the ringing machine, can't remember which one it's called, but it's not easy. Um, there's fuses and whatnot for outgoing lines and things like that, but we're just not gonna bother wiring wiring those in. There's absolutely no point. <laughs> if you look at the bottom of this, this is a very old um, C-Rack. There's some chunky wires that used to go down to below the ground for all of the outgoing calls and stuff. Obviously they've been cut off in the meantime and I've just got my hand stuck, oh my God. So this C-Rack hasn't had much done to it and um, yeah, it's still pretty rough and it's gonna mainly stay the same. It's just, we're gonna use these incorrectly to sort of help organize everything easily, which is good. This is the back of the diverter call. There's still wiring going to the back of the diverter calls as they slide in, like they're modular. So this is the connector, they slide into the box. But um, yeah, next job is to wire this up. Uh, this is all the power that goes from it. Plan is, is to find a, uh, a fuse like one of these or something like that, um, and connect it into the back of here. So there's something that connects up to this and there is now a uh, some lights that go flashy 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 for fuse alarms let's just go around the other side so this is connected as well now so there's a fuse alarm set of bulbs and they'll go over and go off if the fuse alarm goes off quite tempted to get this going but it's going to be a bit of a faff so it's probably not likely because yeah everything's very higgledy piggledy on this uh c-rack which is a bit of a shame but it's not you know it's not super it just looks cool it looks cool you know it's there for there for cool purposes the space that's in between here still undecided there's a nice bit of free space so whether that becomes uh, either the drawing machine that I've been talking about, which is basically a 100 by 100 pixel uh, screen of lights, and you're able to dial in the pixels, and which either turns them on or off. So you dial it in, ding, turns the light on. And the cool thing about that is there'll be a live stream, for instance, for the internet, there'll be a live stream of this, and people will be able to call in and you know because you're a hang up and whatnot you can call up there'll be a number assigned to the drawing machine which could be sat here and people call up and just draw things in by typing in the coordinate of the light in the 100 by 100 uh, you know kind of setup and um, be able to draw a smiley face or something, which would, be, which would be well cool. All in all, this was some pretty unorganized ramblings, but I hope it was interesting nevertheless. Uh, hopefully we'll have this all wired up and working it was pretty soon, well, not pretty soon, but before the summer at least, but it's just taking all the necessary steps to get it to that point. That'd be so cool. That would be awesome. Welcome to the museum.